good morning so I really love to pick flowers and I know a lot of you all do too do you like to pick flowers but sometimes when I uh, go inside almost always actually I bring my flowers with and they're really pretty at first but then after a day or two they start to turn brown and then they die and that's kind of sad so today I am going to teach everyone how to do something called plant pressing and it doesn't always keep the flowers quite as beautiful as when they're still alive, but it helps them stay pretty for a lot longer, which I think is pretty special. Um, so yeah, let's go on a hike and see what flowers we can find to press. Um, one more thing before I start, and that is that we want to make sure and only pick things when we know it's not going to make anyone else sad. So should we pick stuff from our neighbor's gardens? No. Um, most of the stuff I'm picking is either from my own yard or from a park down the road where no one does any gardening and everything is um, just natural. And uh, yeah. Oh, one other thing is that, you know, flowers are beautiful, but you can also make some really beautiful pressed leaves. And so my challenge for you all is to see if you can find any leaves with interesting shapes and bring those back for your plant pressing projects. I can't wait to see what everyone comes up with. look like they just fell on the ground. I don't have to pick them. Uh, I can just pick them up. So I will do that. I came from that tree up there. I wouldn't want to take any from the tree because somebody worked very hard to plant and grow that tree. But the ones that are just on the ground are going to die anyway. So this plant has a silly name. It is called Stinky Bob, which is pretty funny. Um, and I don't really think it smells that stinky, but some people do. Um, but the reason why I know it's okay to pick it is that um, a lot of uh, scientists call this an invasive species. And so they try to keep it from growing in places so that other plants that are better for um, the animals that live here can grow instead. So I feel okay about picking this one. Plus it's pretty, so it will be a good plant to press. And so here's a plant that looks sort of like um, Stinky Bob, but this one is what we call a native plant and it does belong here. So I'm not gonna pick it. Um, it's called Bleeding Heart. Can you see why? If you use your imagination, it's it's a little bit heart-shaped. Yeah, the leaves look similar to Stinky Bob, but the flowers have a really different shape. Look, here's some more sorrel. I think I will pick a couple of pieces of sorrel to plant press. Does anybody remember how you identify sorrel? So it's got heart-shaped leaves. How many leaves? Three. And sometimes the backs are purple. These ones are big, so they're not as purple, but you can see some of the smaller ones have purple on the back. And they gl grow close to the ground. Let's take one more from a different spot, so I don't take too many from the same place. Let's see. Okay, and I will put those ones in my bag. If I just see one of a flower, should I pick it? 
Probably not, because then there won't be any. But I see that there are a lot of these sword ferns. And even if I pick one, there will still be a lot. And even if all of you came out and each picked one in the same area, there would still be a lot. So I feel okay about um, cutting one fern frond for our project. Another thing to know if you're in a park is that if a plant is growing way out, way out over across the trail, that someone will probably come and trim it anyway so that the trail stays clear. So like this snowberry that's in the middle of the trail, I can cut that off and that won't hurt nature because someone is going to trim it soon anyway. Still don't want to cut it too far back. Just a little bit to press for my project. This plant also has a really silly name. Um, its serious name is thimbleberry with a th thimbleberry. Um, but some people call it nature's toilet paper because if you find any, you should feel it. It is very, very soft. Um, so yeah, maybe if the grocery stores don't get more soon, we'll still be okay because the thimbleberry is out. Hmm. Okay, I am back from my walk, and now it's time to start pressing my plants. And you have to do it right after you get back, because I haven't been home very long, and some of them are already starting to wilt a little bit. So you really want to do it as soon as you get home. Yeah, and so the things that you need to do your plant pressing are a book and some pages of newspaper or junk mail and your plants and that's pretty much it. I'm using a journal which has blank pages so I'm not really too worried about the um, about the color from the plants getting on it and messing it up. If you're using a book and you don't want the pages to get colored you could put layers of cardboard um, in between along with the newspaper, but you definitely want the newspaper no matter what. Okay. So I open it up just to just a random page and I put down a piece of newspaper and then I lay my plant on it and then I put another piece of newspaper on top of that and then I press it super flat and turn a few pages I like to have a chunk of pages in mine. Um, I don't know if it matters or if that's just a preference. And then I'm ready for another one. And if I have a bunch of the same flower, I like to arrange them in different ways. So like whatever position you put it in when you flatten it, that's how it's gonna stay. Um, once they dry, they're pretty much stuck in, in that position. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna go and press it flat like that. And then I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to do it on its side, so I'll have two different ones. And yeah, then I'm just going to go through and set all of the rest of my plants on pieces of newspaper in different pages. And I don't want them to touch each other because they might get stuck to each other. But you can put different kinds of plants on the same page as long as they have a little bit of space. And yep, just going to keep on going through until I've got all of my plants flattened out and separated with paper. And, oh, there's Thimbleberry, and there's Stinky Bob. And once I have them arranged the way that I want them, and then I'm gonna close my book, and I'm gonna take this inside and leave it closed and put it under a big tall stack of heavier books so that it gets pressed as flat as it can. And then I'm gonna wait 
for three whole weeks before I check on it. And I know that's hard to do, but I thought we could look at a calendar and figure out how, um, how to tell when it's been three weeks. Here is my calendar and it says April because this is the month of April and this is today. And so, um, how many of you have seen a calendar before? Yeah, a lot of us have them. Um, so tonight when you go to bed, you'll wake up and it'll be another day. So uh, this line is sort of like a sleep. So you go to bed and you wake up and it's the next day. And then you go to bed again and it's the next day. And then you go to bed again and it's the next day. And then when we run out of room on this side, we start back on the other side. Um, but the next line down. And we keep on doing that, and each of these squares represents another day. So you have, um, all the days are in lines like this, and each line represents a week. So, um, this is today, and then this is a week, and this is another week, and this is another week. Um, it's sort of like in school how we'd say show and tell is every Thursday or every Friday. These days are all Thursdays. These days are all Fridays. And so if it's show and tell day, and then we don't get two show and tell days in a row, right? You have to wait and have some days that aren't show and tell day before we have show and tell day again a week later. Um, so I'm going to let those plants stay in their stack of books for three weeks. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to count down and I'm going to count three. So one, two, three. And I'm going to circle it. And this is the day when I will be ready to check on my plants and see if they have dried out yet and if they are ready for um, me to use them in a project. So... Yeah, every, every day, no, every night I'll go to bed and next morning when I wake up, I'll draw a new line. And once all the lines, um, all the squares are crossed out and it's this day, I will know that I am ready to check on my plants. Um, I can't wait to see what plants you pick out to press and how they turn out. See you soon.